it seems as if there's been an absolute drought on information and updates for Battlefield 2042 the last three to four weeks or so. But today we did actually get some communication from the community manager, Kevin Johnson, and also a bit of insight on what's going on at DICE from a developer over there. Also, I did actually hop on and play today. That's the footage that you're seeing in the background. There's a portal mode at the moment called Flashback Conquest, where you play on the remastered maps in Portal, ones from 1942, Bad Company 2 and BF3, but it's using 2042 factions. So you've got all the new toys to play with. Actually had some decent moments, I'm not gonna lie, I was playing on Valparaiso here and there were some Battlefield-esque situations that I got into, so if you fancy a couple games on there, it might be worth checking out. Battle of the Balls though and El Alamein, I just don't think they work really well with the modern stuff, but Valparaiso, Arica Harbor and the BF3 maps, I did have a bit of fun there. Now I hadn't played the game since the 22nd of March and that was when they had the Spaz 12 in that TDM mode that was just completely busted. I did a video on that back then. They did fix it the next day but I just haven't had any desire to hop back on the game since. But let's take a look at these announcements. So there's going to be a patch next week for the game and we got some info on it from Kevin Johnson. He's a community manager over at DICE so let's take a quick look. Update 4.0 for BF 2042 is set to go live next week with the patch notes going live at the start of that week too. So if I'm right, this patch was supposed to go live at the start of April. That's what I said in the past. That didn't happen. I wouldn't say we're in the start of April now and by next week, Tuesday or Thursday, I would guess for that patch to go live. That's definitely mid April at that point. So some kind of a delay for whatever reason. He continues, there are over 400 plus individual fixes, bugs and quality of life improvements to go through next week. Here are some key bits until the patch notes go live. 400 individual fixes. I don't think I'll be going through those patch notes, but next. In update 4.0, Rao and Paik shall have their traits updated. Sundance has also received some fixes to their grenade belt, allowing for better anti-armor grenade target acquisition within their immediate vicinity rather than things football fields away. So some changes coming to Rao and Paik. Don't know what they are, but I think it's safe to say that they are the most underutilized specialists. I don't have the stats, but based on what I've played in the past, I just never really saw them that much. So I imagine they're going to be buffed pretty heavily. And then those Sundance grenades, we all know what that's like, right? You throw it at something that's two meters in front of you like a bolty and then it goes off and tries to take out Superman while he's recording his new movie in a different galaxy. <laughs> so hopefully they work better now after this patch next week. Ribbons have been tweaked in order to allow easier unlocking across modes such as Rush, XP for support actions and team play within the game have also been balanced to ensure that teamwork remains king. So teamwork actions in the past for 2042 didn't really give you that many points so it looks like a buff to those is coming. Next, vehicular warfare balancing alongside targeted tweaks to the likes of the Balti to ensure that infantry and vehicle counterplay still has some bite. Big nerf to the Bolt, I expect, and this might be them moving it into the armored vehicle or the attack vehicle category, as they've mentioned before, and then bug fixes towards the ADS bug when exiting a vehicle and reviving near obstacles are also in this update. I've come across that ADS bug a couple times, not being able to revive squad mates and friendlies near obstacles, that's still a thing. I did see a bug recently, a guy called Ravik posted a video where if you prone before you enter a vehicle, your hitbox just kind of disappears, so if you did that in a Bolty or a little bird it's really hard to be shot in it. it needs to be fixed pretty quickly and then the penultimate one here attachments shall also receive an overhaul in update 4.0 with a focus on ensuring they feel unique and have an impact on your loadout choice and gunplay this one's really interesting because this could make a big difference to how the infantry gameplay feels if you're not a main vehicle player Obviously, firing guns is what you're going to be doing most of the time. And the attachment system that launched with the game, very basic. And there were some clear outliers in terms of what you should use. So it was a bit boring to customize your gun. This sounds like there might be some changes in the attachments with a bit of gravitas. So you really got to pick and choose depending on your playstyle. We'll see what happens there. And then Kevin ends the thread here. While this merely scratches the surface of update 4.0 in 2042, we do appreciate the patience afforded to us with getting this update out there. Again, looking forward to your feedback as the update goes live. And that's it. So pretty big chunky update next week. I'll be checking it out when it goes live. I might fire up a live stream or something when it's released just to get some genuine first hand impressions. There was a reply from Kevin to a guy called BF Greed who was talking about the HUD opacity and they said yes in update 4.0 you'll have the ability to alter the transparency of these icons. Really good image at displaying these issues. This should fix that for you. So HUD opacity we've had this in previous Battlefield games. It was really good in BF4 and BF5. Even BF1 had some too if I 
recall correctly. So being able to tweak that would be a great thing. Just remove some of that clutter on the screen. And then that other little bit of insight that I mentioned about DICE. So this is from a game designer at DICE. They're called Frederick Draber. They were replying to War Crisis 12 here who said, be a bro and tell the community how many people are working on 2042. And they replied, sure, almost everyone. So a lot of people who are active in the BF2042 community who are still playing the game, I feel have started to lose their patience a bit because there's just been a lot of radio silence really. So there's a running joke that no one at DICE is working on the game anymore and they've just started focusing on whatever's coming next. But Frederick here said almost everyone at DICE is working on the game. And then Enigma replied, I hope you're joking. It takes everyone on the team multiple months after launch for basic FPS multiplayer things like scoreboard and voiceover IP, really? Why were these things not thought of and made before release? And Frederick added, no, I'm not joking. Not everyone on the team has been working on the scoreboard or the voiceover IP. We're working on many different areas and a lot of improvements are on the way. Now I looked this up on Google and this is completely unconfirmed but it seems that DICE has about 600 to 700 employees and again that is just completely based on information that I found on Google. Might be a lot more, might be a lot less than that and yes they've also had support studios in the past who've been working on 2042. I don't know if they still are but they did in the past. So it seems like there's a large chunk of people working on the game though and I know based on Twitter accounts that they are actually starting to go back into the office now as well. So it could be that they've just got their heads down and they've been working on stuff. When the time's right, they'll show it. We know that season one is coming in summer, June, July, but we don't really know anything about it. And they are legally required to deliver four seasons of content because that's what people paid for with certain versions of the game. So I do think there's a lot of content coming for the game. It's just a case of it maybe taking a bit longer than we wanted it to. And of course, adding a lot of that basic functionality that should have been in the game at launch. And going back to those rumors about DICE giving up on 2042 and just putting most of their developers on the next game, I don't think that's true because I don't think they can afford to do it. Yeah, they might be in concept stages for the next game at the moment, but I don't think that there's a large portion of the developer team actually working on it because if you look at the facts, 2042 is objectively in a bad place as it stands in April 2022, almost six months after launch. You've got low player counts, you've not got much discussion about it apart from negative sentiment, and there's been no new content yet. And it needs a big overhaul for it to appeal to Battlefield fans. And those four seasons of content that they have to deliver legally, they have to, they're vital and they must be absolutely packed full of good content. They're gonna have to no man sky it to use that game as an example to get back the trust of the players and also appeal to new players because all they've heard about the latest Battlefield game is that it's bad and if they don't turn this game around the trust just won't be there for the next title and the reputation of DICE and Battlefield will just slip further down the drain. So there it is. Do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video leave a like. If you didn't a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.